good evening. It's a joy to have you with us. Masked up, man. You are completely masked up. <laughs> have you seen these news reports? I mean, I, I really feel sorry for the, the boom operators, for these reporters that go out remotely, these reporters wearing these masks, because they really have to get the mic close. Because otherwise, all you hear is, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Man, there are people trying to play four-dimensional chess in this election, in elections all through the nation, really. And President Trump has has done one really, uh, in my opinion, really bad thing and one really good thing. Yeah. So, just recently, in fact, just um, his coronavirus update that he did, which uh, I was not happy to see those were here. He comes on and tells everybody to wear a mask. And as you said, there are a lot of conservatives that are not pleased with him over that because unlike, I think it was Governor DeWine uh, said, no, the mask is not a symbol of freedom for anyone who has common sense. It's a symbol of control. <laughs> these little single-use masks that mm -hmm. give you only 3% protection, the... Yeah, it's a symbol of control, is, is what it is. And, and sadly, I think President Trump is trying to work both sides of the fence. And he doesn't need to. Not now. He really doesn't. So that was the minus side. But I always like to present the plus side later. Yeah. And the plus side was that he has sent federal officers into Chicago, uh, making Mayor Lightfoot lose her, uh, what passes for, her mind. <laughs> so, he, it's been good and it's been bad. I'd like to uh, get your perspective on that, frankly, on on the uh, the yin and the yang there. Well, I first and foremost, I really think, and I thank God for you and Bonnie Williams and Mary Brockman and Mrs. Biggs and all the others who have been a part of the TECN community over the past four years. Because I think we now have a message that has gotten out. Black people want to be safe just like white people. <laughs> I think we got that message out. Uh, and somehow we've had uh, Mayor Lightfoot with, uh, a, I believe, 400, over 490 mur murders in Chicago. And it's just July. Can you imagine that? We're halfway through the year. Can you, that, that's, we're looking at possibly having almost 900 murders in one single city. 900. And in the District of Columbia, Mayor Muriel Bowser is at the home run mark of 106. She's averaging out to 189 by the end of the year. And the whole idea is Donald Trump got it right. Black people in the inner city don't like mob rule. While we don't mind breaking a few windows to get free tennis shoes from Nike uh, and a couple of dresses out of uh, 16 plus, uh, you know, we really don't want our economy stopped. Uh, we really don't want uh, neighborhoods burnt down. And we certainly don't want three, eight, nine, ten year olds dying on the streets of urban America. So, for conservatives out there, and there have been a few that question the constitutionality of what he's doing, we know according to Article 2 of the U.S. Constitution that he has been given the duty, and I was corrected by you last night, not just the right, but the duty to make certain that he faithfully executes the law of the land. And so the law of the land doesn't mean just the rural areas or the suburban areas or the areas that are red that means the blues too uh, so I, I'm ecstatic I'm happy he's doing what's constitutionally right he's not sending in the National Guard he's using the resources that are under his control doing a wonderful job now the problem is the left doesn't want murder and mayhem to go away because if it did then there goes 
their agenda, their narrative, that actually blacks can live in peace, blacks can defend themselves with the Second Amendment, blacks can make money without being in a quote-unquote systemic, racially uh, perfunctory organization that compels against them? Can you imagine if Donald Trump pulls off in just a few months what liberals and black liberals could not do in 50 years. Can you imagine that? Well, it would be, it would be the, the success, the brass ring, so to speak, on the merry-go-round that these leftist mayors in these cities have never even bothered to reach for. And the, their, when I say their, the left's, uh, uh, the left's meme is that Black Lives Matter represents, the Black Lives Matter organization represents black people in the United States of America, and of course, nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, instead of Black Lives Matter, it really should be called, uh, you know, again, black lesbian Marxists. Yep. I mean, if you, I, I know I sent you that video by Lord Jamar, uh, the rapper, mm -hmm. who said that he was not a supporter of Black Lives Matter because, and he nailed this, the, the Black Lives Matter organization is an organization that is given to black people in the United States of America by white leftists. In fact, I'll go further tonight, Ken. Mm -hmm. even, though, even though I'm not black, even though I can never have the black experience. But you play it well on television. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will say this. As looking at cause and effect of this phony organization with just these figureheads at the top, these trained Marxists at the top, I think that not only is the Black Lives Matter movement a, 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 a mendacious movement towards the black community in the United States of America, I think it is downright a white supremacist movement. There you go. Because, yeah. Would you agree with that? I agree with you. Because the majority of the organization, first and foremost, the money doesn't flow through Black Lives Matter. You, I mean, you get your cut off the top. But that's about it. Act Blue gets that money. And Act Blue is run by a white core group. Uh, then George Soros gets his portion in there as well and a few other organizations where the money is turned back over and the Black Lives Matter national groups, individual chapters don't get any money whatsoever and there are very few black people that actually are members of Black Lives Matter There's a whole lot of white liberals, a lot of Marxists from the local universities but it goes back to the Frankfurt School uh, that back in the 1950s realized uh, those individual German professors that were kicked out of Germany or, or left Germany for a better way of life here in the U.S. Uh, went to Columbia University uh, to the Frankfurt School and there they said that the whole idea of revolution by Karl Marx was not going to work by depending on the workers. The whole idea of it working was a dependency on gays, lesbians, the minorities, and people who felt disenfranchised. If you get those four people anxious and irate, oh my God, you can do whatever you want. You can change everything. And by golly, they are so right. I have never seen so many people in my entire life justify burning down another man's property simply because you're angry with the popo. Yeah, it's, it is anger-driven, this this uh, insurgency. I, I really don't want to call it a movement. I'd really rather not yeah. call it that. And everyone is getting tired of it. Whenever you see the mothers and families of these people, who these young people, these, these kids, of one years old, three years old, five years old, that are killed by these Black Lives Matter insurgents, they almost always say, we don't need fewer cops on the street. We need more. We need more police on the street. 
this defund the police thing that's going on is just there to create more chaos. So President Trump moving the federal officers into some of these worst areas is actually a very smart notion. I mean, he's doing actually less than I wanted him to do because I wanted him to sit in the Navy SEALs and, you know, the Army Rangers and people like that. Exactly. Okay, but he's being very, very smart about it. And I think that, though, Ken, there's some four, four-dimensional chess attempting to be played here. All right, and I, as an example, I uh, give you the circuit attorney down in St. Louis. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> she wants to prosecute this couple. Who Kim were, Gardner. Who were exercising their rights under the Castle Doctrine in Missouri. Okay, not only that, but exercising their rights under the Castle Doctrine in Missouri with unloaded weapons. Yeah, we just now found out those, those guns, uh, Ken's viewers, that... You guys saw in that viral video that they were quote unquote brandishing and whatnot. That, that viral video, um, they weren't loaded. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they they were just putting up a bold front to try and, and keep them away from their actual house. Now this woman is still going to try and prosecute them. Okay, and the uh, the Missouri governor and the Missouri Attorney General are against this, and Missouri Governor is prepared to pardon that couple if she does prosecute them. However, I think that some care has to be taken on the part of the Trump administration. I know that that uh, Attorney General Barr was looking at the possibility of charging this woman with violation of that couple's civil rights, mm -hmm. but timing is very important in this instance. All right. Mm -hmm. It is at this point, July the 23rd, uh, the circuit attorney there in St. Louis has a, a runoff election on August the 4th. Okay, so there would be no better time for her to squeal like a little piggy wiggy wiggy. Oh, look at these horrible Republicans that are that are charging me just for trying to protect these peaceful demonstrators and things like that uh, you should feel a lot of sympathy for me and vote for me so I hope that if the Congress people from Missouri and Secretary Barr and any of the rest of them that are thinking about doing this are prepared to do this that they wait until after August the 4th because I think that might be why this woman is charging this couple what do you think? Uh, no I concur with you that and let me just make this very straight for people who are following along at home and in a few months you'll be listening to this on uh, EDL and other places um, the Democrats don't give a damn about the people uh, the Democrat Marxists care about only one thing bourgeoisie power and influence that's what they care about and all they wish to do is install oppression by any means necessary. Do you really think, and let me just be, I'm not trying to be racial here, but let me just be earnest with you. Do you really think that if a three-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a ten-year-old were being killed west of the river in some of the swanky neighborhoods, the Tony neighborhoods of Washington, D.C., do you really think uh, it would be allowed to happen more than once or twice in a year? Never. In fact, when you look at all of the figures for murders and homicides in the District of Columbia, more than 80% of them happen east of the river. Where is east of the river? It's where they get 90% of their black vote. So literally, the Democrat Marxists have sold black people a bill of goods and unfortunately they have never asked for a refund they don't care about black people 42 percent of the businesses that have shut down across the country thanks to all of these lockdowns for good are black businesses small black businesses and they're not coming back they don't 
give a damn about black people. So the question from Donald Trump is a wise one. And you're right that we have to be careful in terms of how we ask it. But it's a very essential one. What do you have to lose should be changed to what do you have to gain? Because nothing over the past 50 to 60 years of Democrat rule in urban America has shown any such gain for black people. We've lost our population. We've lost our wealth. We've lost our children. We've lost our hope. What do you have to gain? All of that and so much more by voting for Donald Trump. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that, and that is that is the way that he should approach it. What you have to gain is peace and prosperity. Where you want to be with your families. And personal power. That's what you have to gain. So I completely agree with that, Ken. I completely agree. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask you, I, can I ask you something because I, I don't want you to go, you're a brilliant man and you can talk about a lot of the world affairs that are going on. I had Janice Hall on last night, the J. Hall World Report, and we were talking about China and ch she's kind of, you know, she doesn't want to pull the, the lever to say that China is being provocative to bring the U.S. into war because they are tackling India and tackling Taiwan and tackling the South China Sea. So I want to get your opinion. Uh, do you believe that Xi Jinping, the Secretary General of the Communist Party of the People's Republic of China, is trying to provoke Donald Trump to go into a war before the election? It's always possible. This is one. Mm -hmm. It's always possible that he would try to do that. I mean, remember who has a very close relationship with China and has had for decades. And that would be that would be creepy Joe Biden. Yep. And his family. So it would be within China's interests, particularly at this point, to make sure that President Trump loses the election and you will be able I think to see them use all of their artifice to try and make that happen now whether Joe Biden's uh, actual president is going to be Kamala Harris or uh, Elizabeth Warren and I think that is coming up to be a possibility because of statements that Joe Biden has made uh, such as Islam should be taught in American schools. I think he's trying to get some more policy out there, what a vote policy, so that black voters will not get angry with him if he chooses Elizabeth Warren. If that happens, I still think it'll be Kamala Harris. All right, the Chinese know that, that he will be their ally, his son will be their ally, his family will be their ally. They will have a much better time with Democrat administration than with a Trump administration and with some of some of the conservatism that can come out of the Trump White House. And would they try and bait him into a war to entangle him that way? That's a possibility. However, there is the other side of that, which says that we do have obligations uh -huh. with Taiwan to come to their aid. Yes. So if it must be done, it must be done. However, I was uh, I was in the chat when you guys were talking last night, and I said in the chat we should also have a a close relationship with India, and an even closer relationship with India. That could actually be a marker that might make the Chinese go a little bit slower in the direction of Taiwan because the last thing they want is to honk off the Indians because you look at India and you think that it's just over a billion poor people. But if you look at the history of India, you understand that the Indians are extremely ferocious fighters on a fundamental level. And I think Chinese would be worried a lot less 
less, believe it or not, over a war with the United States than they would be with possible military action coming from India. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in finality here, uh, people want to know, uh, because you are a very vacationing guy, uh, and uh, <laughs> BZ has told me that you take vacations at least 51 out of the 52 weeks of the year. Uh, when are you taking your next vacation? When are you coming back? Uh, and are, is that going to be in time for election 2020? Well, I think BZ is exaggerating. <laughs> just, just a touch. Just a it's touch. Actually, it's actually 48 weeks out. <laughs> no, uh, as I always have done, I take I take three vacations a year. Uh, a, A, and Christmas, which means April, August, and Christmas. Yep. And I usually take about two weeks in April and August, and then I take about three around, you know, the Christmas holidays and all that. Um, my next time off, I will let you know specifically when it's going to be, but figure on the final two weeks of August into September, I should be back by the second week in September, definitely. And I will absolutely be here for the uh, for election night 2020 and I know that you are going to be with us to celebrate yep. Christmas yep all right on the yep. English Defense League radio show and bring your own 45s this time <laughs> to share your own music with us and with the world and I Jeff wanted me to before I let you go yep. tell you that of course you always always have an open invitation to come to our program which, uh, as you, as you, you say you have said, starts at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays and Sundays. Uh, you know, anytime you feel like giving up some sleep, <laughs> you're always, always welcome well, to uh, come and be with us. Well, you know I'm ever grateful to you, Dave. You're awesome, man. And I'm ever so thankful for uh, how you support me in that chat role. Because you know I'm up against Mary and Bonnie, and they're tough. They're real tough. <laughs> well, it's really hard to oppose such such lovely and talented ladies <laughs> as, uh, as Bonnie and Mary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that makes it doubly difficult. You know what? <laughs> I can tell. You know what side your bread is buttered. There you go, smart man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Love you, man. God bless you. We'll talk with you later. Love you, brother. God bless you. All take right, care. ladies and gentlemen, Dave Milner with us tonight. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back from that break, I uh, want to close out uh, the night uh, and prepare you for tomorrow. We'll have a special guest talking about police unions and how they are the real difficult entity to deal with regarding uh, the situations in urban America. It's not necessarily... Uh, well, you know it's the politicians, but you also know, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, the advocates and protesters, uh, their interest is not necessarily the well-being of communities. And the police union has fractured many of the white shirts from the blue shirts uh, in this particular process. So we'll be talking about that and the impact in the future uh, for policing in America. Uh, I'll tell you who that guest is when we get back. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back right after this break from our very, very good friends.